In this video, we're going to be introducing the idea of flows on graphs, uh, and they have sort of a long formal definition, but let's go ahead and start with that. Um, but then you'll have a better idea of what's happening once we actually look at some examples. So an integer flow on a graph is an ordered pair that consists of d, which is an orientation of all the edges, and then a function f such that the amount flowing into every vertex and the amount flowing out of every vertex is equal. Okay, so this concept here is that the net flow is zero at every vertex, which we'll, we'll see in just a second. So this says, right, d is an orientation of the edges, and f is an integer valued function, so we're interested in integer flows. Um, so all the edges get mapped to integers. Okay, so let's see what this looks like. This is a page full of notation and stuff, but whenever we actually see this, it's a little more clear what's happening. So let's take this graph in purple called the prism. So let's assign an integer flow to this graph. Okay, so we'll start with this green one here. So first, remember it's an ordered pair. A flow is an ordered pair that is an orientation on all the edges and then a map that takes every edge to an integer. Okay, so basically what we're doing here is we're going to put a direction onto every edge. And then we also want to give each edge a weight. So this is the orientation, right? We directed every edge, and now we want to give every edge a weight. That's the F part of the ordered pair. And we want to do it in a way that makes sure that the net flow is zero at every vertex. So just as an example, let's think about this vertex up here. Let's say I assign a two on this edge. So now there's two going in. So if I assign one and one to these two edges, now there's one, two going out. Now, you might be asking two what or one what. It doesn't really matter. I mean, so maybe this is a system of water pipes and these are gallons per minute or something. But essentially what we're doing is we just want to make sure that the amount going into every vertex is the same as the amount going out at every vertex. So here, two in and then one, two out. Okay, um, so then maybe we think about the, this vertex. So right now it's got one going in uh, and then maybe we have three going out. Well now this has one going in and then three going out for a grand total of two going out. The net is two going out and then we've got an edge going out so we need to counteract that with a, ne a negative two going out. Now you might think it's kind of weird to put negative numbers on here but remember all we care about is integers, right? We want integer flows and every edge gets mapped to an integer. So it's fine. Integers are positive or negative numbers or zero. Okay, so if you think about what's happening at this vertex now, right, you've got one going in and then three going out for a total so far of two going out, but then you've got negative two going out, which means that they're the same, right? So if you, t if you look at this is negative two going out and three going out, which means really just one going out and then one coming in. Okay, so now let's think about this. This edge is the weight for this one's already been determined because we know this and this. So this has negative two going in and then two going out. So you might think about what needs to go on this edge to balance that out. So it turns out the answer is four. No, it's not. <clears throat> right, if negative two is going in and then two is going out, we need this to be negative four, right? Because how much is moving into the vertex? Negative two. Okay, so that's the same as having two go away from the vertex. And here's another two going away from the vertex, which means we need negative four going away from the vertex. So if you don't understand all of this right away, that's okay. Um, we're going to be exploring this in, in the next couple of videos. But right now that fixes this vertex and then this one and this one. And so we need to find some edges um, or some weights that will fix this other part of the graph as well. Okay, so here we've got, say, one going in one going in and maybe we have another one going in and then we need negative two going in to make this have net zero. And then now this edge is completely determined because it needs to make this net flow zero and this net flow zero. So here we've got three going in, one going out. So this needs to be negative two. And does that work for this? It does because we've got negative four going in, negative four going out. So this is an example of an integer flow on this graph. 
you put a direction on every edge and then an integer weight on every edge with the condition that the net flow at every vertex is zero. Okay. So let's try a different one. So once you have, it's, these, these things are not unique. It's not like this is the only way I could have done this. Um, so let's think about what happens if, okay, I'm gonna copy down some pieces of the flow that I had last time. So let's say I have, So I haven't changed anything so far, right? Two going up this way, one going down this way, one going across, three going across, one going up. Um, but let's just say we we don't like that negative four that's at the bottom. So let's we're going to keep everything else the same, right? So all of these are exactly the same as in this one. But now we don't want this negative four. Well, <clears throat> it has to have something to do with four if we want the net flow here and the net flow here to be zero, right? This edge weight has to have something to do with four because right now this has negative four going out, okay? So one way to solve that is to put negative four going in. The other way to solve it is to put four going in the other direction, okay? So this will also be a flow on this graph. So if you want to flip the direction of an edge, you just switch the sign of its weight, right? And you can check that this will actually work out. So the edges, um, the direction of the edges isn't super important if you're allowed to switch the edge weights, right? Because if you switch the direction, you just switch the sign of the weight and everything will work out just fine. So for example, maybe we don't want any negative numbers, okay? So you might try pausing and writing on a sheet of paper to construct the corresponding flow that goes with this one that doesn't use any negative weights. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Again, you can pause and think about this if you want. Um, so all the positive numbers, we're gonna keep the same. All right, okay, so that's all the positive ones. So now this was negative two sort of going down, so if we make it positive two going up, that should be okay. This was negative four going to the right, so if we make it positive four going to the left, that should be good. Negative two going up, so positive two going down. Negative two going up, so positive two going down. And you can check that the net flow here should still be zero, right? We'll start up here. Two in, one, two out, check. One, two, three in, three out, check. One, two, four out, four in, check. Four out, four in, check, three in, one, two, three out, check, one, two in, two out, check. Okay, so this is another way to do this, right? So you don't necessarily need negative numbers, so these things can come up in a couple of ways. You might have some flexibility with the directions of the edges, in which case you don't need any negative numbers, or you might be told these are how the directions work, come up with a flow, in which case you might need negative numbers. And then something else I want to talk about is, Zero is an integer two, so you don't necessarily need, um, you don't necessarily have to have non-zero weights. Like so for example, what happens if I just put zero on everything? Well this is also technically a flow, right? Because we've got our direction on every edge, and of course the net flow at every vertex is zero because there's nothing moving anywhere. Zero going in, zero going out, zero going out, of course that's net flow zero. But that's not, I mean that's sort of like cheating, okay? So we're not really interested in flows like this. And in fact, we're not really interested in flows in general. So let's just do one more. We're not really interested in flows in general that have zeros in them. For example, you might have a situation Let's just do one last one here. So maybe I'll orient this little triangle going around in a circle and this one going around in a circle. And all of those have weight one. And then all the edges across the middle have zero. And this would also work, right? One in, one out, and zero doesn't matter. One in, one out, zero doesn't matter. One in, one out, zero doesn't matter. One in, one out, one in, one out, one in, one out. So this would also be a flow, but we don't like these zeros. <clears throat> oh, 
Okay, so hopefully you're starting to get an idea of how flows work. We're going to be exploring it more in the next few videos. But we need a couple of other definitions first. Uh, one is that a K flow is an integer flow such that every edge is assigned a weight whose absolute value is strictly less than K. Okay, so let's try and figure out what K is for all of these. Okay, so you want to find the biggest absolute value. So in this case, negative 4 is the biggest number. Um, the absolute value of negative 4 is the largest. So this K flow, right, says that every edge has a weight whose absolute value is strictly less than K. So what's the smallest K that will work here? 5. Right, 4 is strictly less than 5. So this represents a 5 flow also represents a 6 flow, right? Or a 115 flow, right? It doesn't matter. You, as soon as you find the first one that works, everything larger than that works based on this definition, right? Because all you need it to be is strictly less than whatever number you choose. So usually we're interested in the smallest such number, right? So 5 for this one. And similarly, this is also a 5 flow. Again, the largest absolute value is 4. Right, and this is also a five flow. This, right, is a one flow, and this is a two flow. Right, because so this is also a five flow. So remember, you want to basically you want to find the biggest absolute value, then add one, and that's the number that works, right? Because you need it to be strictly less than whatever, whatever k is. Okay, and then the other thing I mentioned before, right, we're not really interested in zeros. That's kind of like cheating. So we have a name, nowhere zero, right? A nowhere zero flow is a flow in which no edge is assigned a weight of zero. So for example, these first three are nowhere zero flows in the green and teal and red, but this one in the sort of yellow, brown, and black, those are not nowhere zero. Okay, and we are mainly interested in nowhere zero K flows. That's going to be what we're most interested in. Graphs that we can assign some K flow to, and we, are, we never want to use zero. And then, specifically, we're interested in what values of K work, or what are the smallest values of K that work for a given graph. So this is our introduction to flows, and we'll be exploring them more in the next couple videos.